Now the latest on the MSC Napoli. In January, the ship got into difficulties in a storm. The Napoli was carrying a cargo of over 2,300 containers. The task of removing those containers began shortly after she was beached. Now the last of them has been taken off. And finally, with the decks and holds clear, the ship's salvage can begin. We'll keep you updated in future editions of the MCA Video News Podcast. All this week, people have been queuing up along the East Devon coast to see explosions take place aboard the MSC Napoli. Now watch closely at this next section. We've speeded up the footage to show you what happens in the space of 10 minutes. So now the job is done and everyone here is very impressed. But what next for the Napoli? Last month, if you took a helicopter trip over the Napoli, you could clearly see what's left of its rusting remains sticking out above the water. But it's been a painfully slow process pulling apart what's left of this cargo ship. Spotlight has learned today that there are problems with the salvage operation, trying to get rid of the giant engine which is below the sea. It weighs around 1,400 tonnes and it simply won't budge. These pictures taken earlier during the operation show the cutter which has been pulling the Napoli apart. It's been damaged by the strength of the engine still below the water. And it all means a delay to this operation. Now it could be late autumn or even winter before it's completed. Divers have been using underwater cutting gear. They will now inspect what's left of the engine after the explosions. But it seems certain that this operation will go on well into the autumn. All that heaving and hauling to remove the forward section of the Napoli has done the stern no good at all. It has sunk deeper into the clay seabed and has disappeared underwater. Not many people still believe that this will all end well, until Paul Clearham and Klaas Reinichert of GR Maritime come up with a bold but solid plan to lift the wreck in a bed of chains and scrap it piece by piece above the water. But how do you lift almost 4,000 tons of steel stuck in thick clay in one piece? After performing a series of multi-beam surveys to determine the exact position of the wreck, the project can take off. Salvos will thread 12 chains under the wreck using a special drilling system. The habitat a watertight cabin with the drilling machine will be lowered onto the seabed. Positioning needs to be precise to ensure the chains are exactly parallel to each other. Despite modern technology and electronics, ship salvage is still the work of man. GR Maritime contracted subsea diving company DISA from Belgium for the underwater activities. The drilling rig is in position and drilling can start. The operator on board the mother vessel starts the engine and the first four and a half meter long drilling rod disappears into the seabed. When most of it is underground, the operator adds a rod using the automated connection system and continues drilling and adding rods until the drill appears above the seabed at the other side of the wreck. Now, a diver needs to replace the drill head with a reamer. But how do you find a 15 centimeter thick rod underwater when visibility is less than 50 centimeters? Luckily, a stream of air bubbles from the air under pressure in the rod shows the diver the drill head position. The stakes are high here, so Didier, one of the two owners of DISA, is personally in control. One of the chains that have to pass underneath the wreck is lowered from the support vessel. The diver has already replaced the drill with the reamer and now connects the chain to its end. When the rod is retracted, the chain will be pulled underneath the wreck. The reamer widens the tunnel for the chain, which is much thicker than the rod.
Two barges will be anchored alongside the wreck, one to port and one to starboard. The 12 chains will be laid into chain pullers on both barges. By pulling in the chains on both sides, the salvos intend to break the wreck free of the clay and bring it to the surface. After carrying out this drilling process 12 times, all the chains lie ready on the seabed of Lime Bay, waiting for the next step. The contract for constructing the 24 chain pulling machines, each with a pull capacity of 250 tons, has been awarded to Hydrospecs in Hengelo. The forces on these machines will be gigantic, but brute force alone is out of the question. Power, precision and accurate control are essential. So Paul and Klaas visit the factory regularly, together with some of their specialists. Before the chain pullers can be handed over to GR Maritime, they are tested extensively, of course, under the vigilant eyes of the salvers. These very strong chain pullers are driven by heavy-duty power packs, but can be controlled to an accuracy of a few kilos via a sophisticated computer system. When it has passed all tests, each chain puller is ready for transport to Harpo in Dordrecht, where two barges are being prepared. At Harpo, they are about to load the last machines onto the barges, including two large mobile cranes and two heavy-duty hydraulic cutters. The deck area on the barges is efficiently planned. Besides space for the chain pullers, there's an area for cutting up the large sections coming off the wreck and a storage area where the scrap can be stored till it can be transported to a scrapyard in Rotterdam. The chain pullers have been designed to be transported in a standard 20-foot container. This will also come in handy for future projects as it will reduce transportation costs while the barges required can often be contracted locally. When it is ready, the barge saint 8 departs for Lime Bay soon to be followed by the Atlas. In Lime Bay, everything has gone smoothly. So when the Atlas arrives, the salvos and divers have already laid all 12 chains into the chain pullers on the Saint 8. They maneuver the Atlas to the other side of the wreck and anchor her with eight Delta Flipper anchors. Now the chains can also be placed into the chain pullers of the Atlas, a tough job as each shackle weighs over 90 kilos. All stop. One down, 11 more to go. The beginning of the end, the operation to remove the final section of the Napoli gets underway.
We've been standing on the cliff tops here near Branscombe pretty much all day trying to find out what's happening to the 4,000 tonnes or so of scrap metal just below where we're standing. And it's really quite an interesting prospect. What they're going to do just down there is cut this vessel like cheese. They're going to lift it up with giant chains. We spoke to the Dutch salver, Klaas Reiniger, just a short while ago. He said it will be a slow and deliberate operation despite all of this equipment. Here you see 12 chain pullers on one of the barges with the chains going down underneath the rack and going up to the other part where we have 12 chain pullers as well. And then with the chain pullers pulling. And These are big, big hydraulic ramps, are they? Or big hydraulic they? ramps, yes, and here are the chains. And then, you know, we lift the whole stern section, you can say in a sort of cradle of chains, till the pieces are coming above water and then we start scrapping and make the stern section lighter and lighter and lighter. So you just top slice bits yes. of the stern off? Yes. When will it be finished? Hopefully the end of July. Sure. No, anyway, yeah, that's what we think, yeah. Most people around Branscombe and East Devon will be pleased if that is the case. Well, as you heard, we're having a bit of a joke there with Klaus about when it will actually happen. He says pretty soon. Um, some people think it could be August because that's when the contract apparently comes to an end. As usual with the Napoli, time will tell. All set. A final check and then Paul gives the signal to start hauling. Oké okay, jongens, daar gaat hij uh, de Rada 150 ton uh, per poeler en uh, ketting 12. De, voor, de ketting voor de machinegamer die hebben we op 110 laten staan. Slowly the load on the chains increases. Jongens, uh, op de C10 mogen jullie nummer 2, nummer 5, nummer 6 en nummer 12 nog even op de hand een klein beetje doortrekken. When the chains are tight, the pullers are stopped to allow divers to check the wreck and the chains. Most are nicely in position, and after some minor adjustments, the green light is given to continue pulling. The salvos take advantage of the good weather and work on around the clock. It's a beautiful, quiet night. When suddenly all the alarms go off, there's something seriously wrong. On the control monitor, they see the forces on the chains increase and run deep into the red. Knowing the chains cannot hold for long, they rush to the pullers. But before they can take action, some of the chains have already snapped and the operation has to be aborted. The seabed's heavy clay turns out to be even stickier than expected and the load on the chains was more than they could handle. So new, stronger chains have to be ordered. Meanwhile, the salvos decide to work the chain tunnels by welding sharp steel teeth to the shackles of an old chain and pull this chain back and forth through the tunnels to loosen the clay. So as not to lose any more valuable time, they also salvage some major parts already detached from the wreck. After the propeller, it's the rudder's turn. Then, they can see the sinister enemy that has snapped their chains. The salvos need high-pressure sprayers, chisels, and even their hands to remove the sticky mass. The new, stronger chains have arrived, and the engines can again be started. Slowly, the chains take up the load. But suddenly, there is a loud bang. Despite a load of only 140 tons, comfortably within the certified limits, one of the new chains snaps. In the control room, Klaas and Paul start to worry. Their worry is justified. 
when soon after, a second and then a third chain snaps. Again, they need to abort. Will GR Maritime ever manage to keep to their deadline? Or will the Napoli keep on resisting with everything she has? A week later, a new set of chains arrives from Norway. It takes three days to thread them beneath the wreck and into the chain pullers. We gaan vandaag alles in ieder geval proberen op te draaien een stukje. En daarna gaan we hem gelijk recht zetten. Dus dat we in ieder geval als er nog een ketting in de grond zit, dat we op die manier proberen die kettingen eruit te breken. Voor de rest, ja, ik weet niet wat we meer hadden kunnen doen dan wat we nu gedaan hebben. Dus we gaan er maar aan beginnen. Dan, dan draaien we hem maar uit. Drie keer een scheepsrecht. Drie keer een scheepsrecht, ja. Oké. Okay. Again, the chain pullers start work. The atmosphere on board is extremely tense this time. Vibrations felt through the barges announce that something is about to happen. This time the chains hold and the Napoli finally capitulates. The chain pullers continue hauling at a rate of 30 meters an hour and soon the first rusty piece of the Napoli breaks the surface. All systems are halted to allow divers to inspect the wreck. Anything sticking out from the wreck that could snag the bottom of one of the barges might still mean failure for the whole operation. Finally, good news. The divers found some cracks, but the wreck is lying stable in her bed of chains. The chain pullers can continue. Pretty soon, a large piece of the hull has surfaced. This has to be removed quickly before it can damage the barge. It's the first time in almost a year that anyone has set foot aboard the Napoli. After a thorough inspection for safety and stability, the breakers can finally get to work. Cutting torches are used to separate large pieces from the wreck, and the crane hoists these onto the deck of one of the barges. With torches and hydraulic cutters, they reduce them to small, manageable pieces of scrap. It's hard to believe, but even a year on the seabed has not been enough to fully soak everything. And here and there, fires are ignited by the sparks of the cutting torches. But the salvers are also well-trained firefighters, and the flames are rapidly extinguished. Lime Bay is a World Heritage Site, so everything needs to be removed, including the loose debris, rubbish and dirt. When the wreck has been demolished down to the waterline, it's time to haul it up a bit further. Lifting, inspecting, cutting, scrapping, cleaning. Lifting, inspecting, cutting, scrapping, cleaning, lifting. It seems a never-ending story. Well, it had to happen eventually. The final piece of the MSC Napoli was lifted from the seabed at Branscombe this afternoon. 
The last piece of the vessel came up just after half past three. Today really has been a very long time coming indeed. It was January the 20th, 2007, when the MSC Napoli was deliberately run aground here. It's estimated that it's cost between 100 and £150 million pounds to clear up the heritage coastline. But today really wasn't about the money. It was more about bringing this whole thing to an end. We've kept a close eye on the Napoli throughout today. This is the very last time it's been possible to stand on the top of the cliffs and see the wreckage still in the water. Earlier, you could just see the base of the Napoli. Just a fragment remained. Several large pieces were removed during the morning and placed on the barge alongside. It looked like a mobile floating scrapyard. Now, the gentleman who's overseen this operation is a Dutchman called Klaus Reiniger. He joins us here now. Klaus, first of all, can I just ask you a little bit about the conditions under, under the sea? Because it wasn't easy, was it? It was, uh, the stern section was buried in very, very stiff clay. And I think during the time that they tried to tow the forepart away, and by breaking it out of the stern section, they wrenched the stern section into this clay. Um, when will these barges now, now go and leave the area? When will we once again be, be clear of all of this equipment? I think the first barge will leave on Sunday, back to Rotterdam, and then the second barge on Wednesday, Thursday, with all the scrap also for Rotterdam, because in the contract we have to deliver all the scrap to a scrapyard in Rotterdam. And you're looking forward to going home briefly? Very much, because now I'm relieved, relaxed, and I want to go home. All right, Klaus, thank you very much for everything you've done here. Obviously, everyone here now is breathing a huge sense of relief that this is all finally over. In spite of sticky clay, chains, weather, and the resistance of the ship herself, GR Maritime and their partners Disa and Harpo have done the job within the agreed time frame. On the 31st of July, the barge with the last remnants of the Napoli arrives in Rotterdam. The final curtain for a mighty ship, but also a magnificent performance against the odds by a special salvage company. <laughs> 